Kathy Dam here. I'm going to do a little bit of a review between the one sample T, independent T, and dependent T because that seems to be where a lot of questions are at the moment. So I thought we could make a table together because I like tables. So we'll, um, oops, I hit a button. So we're going to do the different kinds of T tests here. And then um, I'm just going to have us talk about keywords that indicate to us that which test is warranted. Then I do want to talk about degrees of freedom because it's different for the three tests. And remember, you use the degrees of freedom to get your critical T to define your rejection region. And then we're going to talk about how you calculate that value. So let's get started. We have the one sample T. That's what that says. So if you have one sample T, the key words is going to be something like um, one sample. So a sample of people drank tea and they were compared to, and usually it'll say something like a known average. So if there's a known average, then we're just gonna take that one sample and compare it to a known average. Um, you're not going to see two samples. You're not gonna see multiple recordings. And another thing that's important is that um, you won't have a data set. So you're going to have, um, I'm going to report to you what the sample mean is and what the standard deviation is. So if I give you a story and I say people drank tea and we wanted to know if that made them, I don't know, happier than the known average, then what I'm going to do for my degrees of freedom is take my sample size minus one. And I only have one sample, so if I said 25 people drank tea, then it's going to be 24. When we do our calculations, um, this is very similar to the one sample Z. And for a discussion about why we don't do a one sample Z, I refer you back to the lecture about Gossett. Um, but I do want to clarify that it looks very, very similar. So here we're going to have, oops, our sample mean minus the mu divided by our standard deviation of the sample divided by the square root of n. So that's how we calculate our T for step four and our six steps. Now let's talk about the dependent T. So for keywords for our dependent T, oops, okay, um, you're gonna have things like before and after, right? Oh, you'll have the same people twice. Or you might see something that indicates that they're paired in some fashion. So husbands and their wives, or teachers and the mothers of the same child, right? So they're somehow paired up. But usually you see something like before and after. So our degrees of freedom are also going to be n minus 1. But this time it's n minus 1, and I'm going to put p for the number of pairs. So if it's, let's say it's 10 people before and after. So that means I have 20 measurements, but I'm only interested in the 10 people's different scores. And actually, now that I say that, I think I'm going to erase P for pairs. I'm gonna put D for different scores because I think that might make it more clear. So again, if I have um, 20 people, and uh, I measure them twice, I'm gonna have 40 data points, but I'm really only interested in the 20 different scores. So I'm only looking at how many different scores do I have. Let's say I was looking at husbands and wives and I had 10 couples. I'm going to have 10 husbands and 10 wives, but that makes 20 people, right? But I'm only interested in the 10 couples. So I'm going to subtract the husbands from the wives and I'll have 10 different scores. So when we're looking at our degrees of freedom, it's still going to be n minus 1, but you don't want to look at how many people are in your study necessarily, but just how many different scores are going to be for the dependent t. Now the dependent t, we can calculate it by hand, and I could put the formula here. I refer you back to the dependent t lecture. However, for us, we're going to be using JASP. So what we would do to click on for JASP is first you'd have to load your data set in. And I'd like to point out when you load your data set in, it might look something like this where it has before and after. And you're going to have numbers in all of these places. 
So that's important to remember because your data are going to come over very differently than if they were um, uh, an independent T. So what you would click on in JASP is first you're going to click on T-Test. And then you're going to click on Paired Sample T-Test. That's what they call the dependent T. And here I do want to point out, and I'll put it in red, Order Matters. So when you enter your data into the paired t-test, you want to first start with the after. Put this one in first and then go with the before. Put this one in second. And the reason we do that is because mathematically what we will end up doing is we will be saying, um, actually I'll put it in green. We will be saying after minus before. So let's say that after the t, you're happier. So that means that you will have a higher score in the after condition than you did in the before. And so when it's a positive number, it means you went up versus if it's a negative number, that means you went down. So you have to put in the after variable in the column first and then the before when you're doing the analysis. So that's something to, to think about. I'm just going to get rid of this so I have more room for my other one. Okay. So now let's talk about the independent T. So the independent T, independent, independent <laughs> T, some keywords would be like half the group got this and the other half the group got another condition. Or you're going to have two separate groups or two samples, right? So there's a one sample T and then there's a two sample T. So for the degrees of freedom for this, we're still going to follow the n minus 1 model. Ooh, go away. I don't know what I did. There we go. And <laughs> I keep hitting a button. I'm sorry. n minus 1 model. But it's going to be n minus 1 for each sample size I have. So I'm going to have n minus 1 for my first condition, and I'm going to have n minus 1 for my second condition. So we're going to use both together. So we'll just add them together. So that would be then both my sample sizes minus one. So um, some of you ask questions about how do I know that I have to add them together and how do I know if I just subtract one? Well, because we have two samples, you have to add them together. In the dependent T, I didn't really have two samples. I had two measurements that led me to the different score. Because remember, when I have before and after, I really don't care about the before scores or the after scores. What I really wanted was the next column over, which was the different scores. JASP will calculate the different scores for you. So it's not really two samples as much as it is two measurements from one sample. Whereas in this independent T, it's actually two separate samples. So you're going to do the n minus 1 for each one. So that if you had 25 people in this group and 24 people in this group, it'd be 24 plus 23. So if you were going to be looking at this in JASP, um, the, it's going to look very different than the way the dependent T looked. You're going to have your condition, whatever the storyline is, and it's going to say things like A, B, 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 right? These are nominal. These are not numbers. And then you'll have your result, whatever your, your, <laughs> your outcome is. And these will be numbers. And so what you're going to do then um, is click on t-test. You're then going to click on independent paired, or sorry, independent sample t is what they say. And here the results are going to be, um, the order of the data are going to be automatic. But I'm just going to remind you that order is alphabetical. So if you wanted to do condition A versus B, and you still want the same concept of, right, it's still going to be A minus B. Um, if this makes sense for your data, then leave it alphabetical. But let's say it was supposed to be B minus A for whatever reason. Let's say B is your treatment condition and A is placebo. Then you will have to change the order in the data set itself. And for that, I refer you back to the independent t-test, how to do it in JASP. So there's plenty of examples of how to do that. But for the most part, what I wanted to point out to you is these are the three tests that you're going to be tested on. Sorry, these are the three t-tests that are going to be on your exam. For the one sample t, you're going to have to calculate using this formula. 
that means I'm going to have to give you this information. For the dependent T and the independent T, I'm going to have to give you a data set. You will have to have a data set. Now, how does that look on data set? How will this look on our exam? If I'm asking you to do a one sample T on the um, exam, then you will have everything you need because this will be in the storyline. If I'm asking you to do a dependent T on the exam, um, what will happen is we will run through all the steps and then I will give you the JASP output in the prompt. And I'm going to ask you to use that JASP output to make all of your interpretations. So you can still do steps one through six um, and then you'll have the JASP results there to visualize. The same with the independent T. If I ask you to do an independent T on the test, then I will give you the JASP results um, in the prompt itself. So I'm not expecting you to run JASP during the exam. I think that would be too much of a time suck. However, one of these questions will be on the take home version of the exam. So two of these are going to be on the open ended. I don't know which two, I haven't finished making the test yet. But two of these will be on the open-ended, and one of these will be on the take-home. And the take-home just requires you to run it in JASP and produce the report for me. Now that you know that, think about that. Do you think the one sample T will be on the take-home? I should hope to think that you would realize it will not be on the take-home because you can't, well, you could run this in JASP, but you don't really have to because you can do it by hand. So that means the independent or the dependent T will be on the take home portion of the exam and the, the other one will be during the exam where I will provide you the prompts.